While the rules of do calculus are great because they are complete, just those rules doesn't make it easy to know whether some causal quantity is identifiable from just looking at the graph, like we could do with the backdoor criterion and the front door criterion. In this section, we'll look a bit further on how to determine identifiability from just looking at the graph. To motivate this, let's start with a question. So consider this graph here where W1 and W2 are unobserved. In this graph, is the backdoor criterion satisfied? How about the front door criterion? Is the front door criterion satisfied? The first more general criterion that we'll consider is what we call the unconfounded children criterion. So consider a single treatment variable here. This criterion is satisfied if it is possible to block all backdoor paths from the treatment variable t to all of its children that are ancestors of y with a single conditioning set. So this is a sufficient condition for identifiability when there's a single treatment variable. And this criterion generalizes the backdoor and front door criterions. Let's visualize the flow of association in the graph that we saw in the question on the last slide. This path from t to w1 to y that can't be blocked because w1 is not observed is why we can't use the backdoor criterion. And this path from m1 to w2 to y, where w2 is not observed, is why we can't use the front door criterion. The intuition for why the unconfounded children criterion gives us identifiability is that we can isolate the causal association flowing out of t by focusing on these edges from t to its children. And we can isolate this causal association if the relationship of T and its children that are ancestors of treatment is unconfounded. If it's possible to block all of the backdoor path from T to all of its children using just a single conditioning set. This focusing on the causal association flowing out of T and into its children that are ancestors of Y allows us to remove the non-causal association. In other words, it gives us identifiability. If you see the similarities between this intuition and the intuition for the front door criterion, then great. If not, you might want to spend a bit of time drawing the connections between this intuition and the intuition for the front door criterion, giving us identifiability. But remember that the front door criterion is not satisfied in this graph, so this criterion is a bit more general than the front door criterion which will mean that the intuition is a bit different, even if there are similarities. The unconfounded children criterion is a sufficient criterion for identifiability, but it isn't necessary. As an example of a necessary condition for identifiability, consider this one. For each backdoor path from T to any child M of T that is an ancestor of Y, it is possible to block that path. The intuition is that any causal association flowing from T to Y must flow through its children, and it's only going to flow through the children that are ancestors of Y. So to be able to focus on or isolate all of that causal association for any one of those backdoor paths that produce confounding association, we must be able to block that path. So why is this not also a sufficient condition for identifiability? To see why, consider this graph. Here, y is the only child of t, and we'll consider it an ancestor of itself. And there are two backdoor paths from t to y. The first is t to w1 to w2 to w3 to y. Luckily, this path is blocked by the collider w2. So we can block this path by conditioning on the empty set. And the other backdoor path is t to w2 to y. And we can block this path by conditioning on w2. So there are two backdoor paths, and we can block both of them. 
But we can't block them both with a single conditioning set. Because if we condition on w2 to block the backdoor path t to w2 to y, then we unblock the other backdoor path, because w2 is a collider. So this condition isn't sufficient for identifiability, because even though we need to be able to individually block any of the backdoor paths from t to its children that are ancestors of y, that doesn't mean that we'll be able to block all of these backdoor paths with a single conditioning set, which is what was required in the unconfounded children criterion on the previous slide. Okay, so we've seen a condition that is sufficient but not necessary on the previous slide, and now on this slide we saw a condition that is necessary but not sufficient. What about a graphical condition that is necessary and sufficient? So recall that we already saw that being able to take some causal estimate and turn it into a statistical estimate using the rules of due calculus is a necessary and sufficient condition for identifiability. But this isn't graphical, so it's not as appealing. For a graphical criterion, see these papers. The first one is the main paper. And then in the second paper, they extend it to conditional interventional distributions. The necessary and sufficient graphical criterion is known as the hedge criterion. We won't actually get into it in this course because this criterion requires defining other more complex objects like sea trees and other leafy objects. And we'll conclude this section with a question. So consider this graph here. Is the unconfounded children criterion satisfied here? If I change the graph to this one, how about here? Is the unconfounded children criterion satisfied in this graph? And in this graph, can we get identifiability via any simpler criterion that we've seen before this section? With that, we'll conclude this lecture. If you want to get notifications when I upload future content, then hit the subscribe button and bell below. And don't forget to leave any questions or comments in the YouTube comments below.